Okay, so this is a continuation to the first video. I'm going to try to explain the second method now for um, building a universal build. And basically, with this method, you need to uh, initially create a s in your background image needs to be in the 16 by 9 ratio. So what this means is this 4 by 3 is your iPad screen. And what you need to do is have the image go beyond that in the background where you won't be able to see any of this part here on the iPad, but you will on the iPhones. And with that in mind, we can easily turn our iPad projects that we already have into iPhone ones just by adding a few some content on the side instead of removing some like we did in the first method. And for this, I have this project set up here where I have a pause I'm gonna have a pause scene just to show you guys an error that arises that I read up on on the website and this normal scene okay so what we have here is again the actors that are relative to the edge of the device like this pause button and whatever you may have, like a menu button or a retry or restart, whatever. And then I have these regular actors that just need to stay in place with respect to the where they are on the scene. So that's exactly what I have them labeled as. Now I have this background image here, which is, like I said, the 16 by 9 ratio. So it's bigger than the actual image we need for an iPad project at least in, in its width and it goes off the scene, screen here and you cannot see this until we preview an iPhone uh, preview and I'm going to show you exactly what's going to happen now guys here is your iPad project that you have built and this is what it will look like after we built for our universal binary remember to cap it on crop and remember to reset the scene since this is these uh, rules inside here will fire and when the when the initial scene loads on the iPhone and therefore position themselves properly. So there is your iPhone 5 view and your legacy iPhone. Again, remember to reset and it fills up the scene properly with the buttons readjusting their positions properly. So what's the trick here? Um, create six attributes as follows. You may not want this use pause. I've just made put that in there because I'm building a template which will have the general, the most general um, method of turning your game into a universal game. Uh, and that deals with the pause issue that will arise. I will show you in a minute. So the attributes you want to make are scale factor. That'll take care of itself. You don't need to fill it in. Build platform width and height. You fill those in similarly like the first file that I showed you. They're just basically the size of the iPad platform that you're building on initially. And then a, let's call it a camera offset X and a camera offset Y. And those will take care of themselves. So this time you're going to need to make an unlock actor. There's nothing in here right now. But it, when I put it on the scene, I unlocked it, and before I show you what's in there, make sure that this actor, the unlocked one, is at the very bottom of your layer, because it needs to fire off first. Okay, so, uh, I have this rule here, this is for my template, for a very general case, which will, uh, it won't depend whether your, your project's portrait or landscape, it'll just do it, don't worry about that for now. Uh, so this is what you need to do. You need to change your game scale factor to this. I'm not going to explain why it's this. It's just some math stuff. And it basically just calculates how much your game is going to scale. But then we need to change the scene camera size width and scene camera size height. Now that's the reason why this actor is unlocked because we want to get into those scene attributes. So for that you want to change the scene camera size width to that and then scene camera size height to that it's pretty similar there, it's just the difference of width or height 
And then finally, you want to change the last two attributes you created, the camera offset X and the camera offset Y to the following two things. Again, they're similar, just the difference of width and height there. And I'm not going to explain to you why those things are the way they are. It's just some math stuff again there. Um, okay, lastly, um, you want, don't worry about the use pause for now. Just make sure you have these two rules. Uh, they will create your camera origin. They will move your scene. Oh, actually, you know what? You do need to worry about that because this is where that problem that I read about arises. Now, if you have pause on your scene, changing your camera origin will reset it back to zero the second you hit the pause button. So if you do not have pause on your scene, you change your pause attribute, you leave it. It's false. But if you do, you need to check, click that. And that's going to use a different method uh, to fix that problem. So first, I'm going to explain to you the one where you don't, you don't have a pause. Let's go back to that unlocked scene. And all you're doing here is you're moving the scene camera origin X and Y back by the offset values that we created up here as follows. And if you do have a pause, you want to, you're going to want to check that attribute off. And in that case, you're actually going to not move the origin of the camera, but you're going to move everything else in the opposite direction. And I will show you guys what happens. The background and the relative actor, they, this is the case where you do have the pause on your scene. Instead of moving the camera origin, like I just said, we'll move the actual position of the background over by the offset in both the X and Y position. And similarly with your actors that are relative to the scene, the exact same here. Now the last thing you want to do is make these actors, actors that are relative to the screen, uh, calculate their positions no matter what device we're on. So to do this, uh, don't worry about that portrait stuff there. So whatever you see in there, you don't need to worry about. Um, so if you do have the pause, it's going to move the Y positions of any one of these actors to itself plus the offset in the Y direction. And then depending on whether the button is on let me show you is this half of the scene or this half of the scene and we'll do something different as follows if it's to the right of the half line of the screen it will move itself to twice that offset in the, the rx offset however if it's on the left of it nothing will happen it will stay there now this is all for the if you have a pause on your scene Basically, what that's doing is mo moving these all over, sort of, but not exactly. Now, uh, if you do not have a pause, just look at this part here. All you need to do is, if its X position is on the right of the midpoint of the scene, it needs to just move over by the offset in the X. Its X position needs to move over by the offset amount. And if it's on the left, it needs to move in the negative offset direction. So basically, it's position minus the offset. And that's all you need to create the second method of a universal build. And since this is a general method, this would actually work on the fire or whatever other device you deployed to.